All right. So a lot of questions which I get on these topics. Black magic, jadu tona, evil eye, nazar lagna and so on. It's in essence the same problem uh, because it is a situation where you are being overpowered by someone who you don't know. And how they do it is something which nobody knows. <laughs> Why they do it is of course known because out of envy, jealousy, hatred, right? And it happens in most of the cases that you get affected by these things by someone at the least expected moment or worst to worst case is when you are undergoing something very good in your life when something very great is happening in your life then this tracks you down so what to do during such times right so first you have to understand who can become a victim of all this right now of course there are uh, many uh, tantrics who can do this uh, using a lot of means, um, there are many, um, I, I won't say pujaris, but evil ones who, can, who could do it. Uh, it can be used for, used for some right purposes also, but uh, primarily in my experience, it's used for uh, pulling somebody down, right? So therefore, we got to understand who actually uh, can become a victim to all this, because if you understand that, then you, you can understand if you will be a victim someday, right? Of course, at a higher level, um, anyone can victim uh, become a victim of this. Right? Nobody can claim to be a 100% immune from all this. Nobody, right? Neither you, me, nor anyone. But in essence, uh, we can understand there are certain patterns and there are certain people who can be more victimized by all this, right? So... So we will see the psychological part and then we will go to the astrology and then at the end we'll also discuss uh, what are the remedies which we could use uh, if we feel that we are victims of any of these, right? So as usual, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me regarding black magic <laughs> or career or marriage or relationships or health or anything else, you can always go to my website down in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will protect you from black magic and other things. Uh, so first, let's understand uh, who can become a victim of this, right? So see, what are these basically? These are energies which overpower us at a subtle level, not uh, which ultimately leads uh, in a physical realm, right? So first you have to understand that the subtle body gets affected. So what is the subtle body? So the body that we have, which we see now, uh, which we can see our hands. So this body, the gross body, this is known as the gross body. <laughs> the gross body is the gross body, right? So what you see physically with these eyes is the gross body in short. Then there is the soul, the Atma, right? Who, which is actually who we are, right? The soul, the Satchit Ananda, right? Chit. But then there's something in between because the soul is completely spiritual. And then this body, this physical body is completely material, right? Material in the sense, this is very gross and the soul is beyond all this, right? So, who can act as a junction, right? Then the concept of subtle body comes in, right? So the subtle body is like the software, right? So this body that we have, this body is not the user, it's the hardware. So the soul, the atma, the chit is actually the user. So I'm a user, I'm sitting and using this laptop, right? So laptop is the hardware. Similarly, this body that you see is actually the hardware. And the subtle body is like the software. It's like Windows, it's like Android, it's like Mac OS or anything else that you like, right? So, <clears throat> so the, the subtle body consists of three things, the mind, intelligence, and false ego, right? Man, buddhi, ahankar, as they call it, right? So what is the mind? The mind is the software by which 
we either enjoy or suffer in this world. That's it. Nothing else, right? So anything that we feel is enjoyable is actually enjoyable to the mind, right? It's it may be enjoyable to the body, but ultimately it's enjoyable to the mind. Then there's the intellect, the intelligence, the buddhi. Many times people think buddhi is just referring to you know some uh, ability to memorize or grasp things, to be very smart, to be very flamboyant. No, that's not buddhi. Buddhi is uh, the intelligence is superior to the mind, right? So what does it mean? Superior. Superior means it has the power to control the mind, our ability to differentiate between good and bad, the ability to make right choices, right? That is what is the intelligence. So the intelligence is higher than the mind. Then we have ahamkar. Ahamkar. So ahamkar, as my Shiksha Guru used to say, I am kar. I am car means so I am driving the car but I am not the car right now imagine you start thinking oh I am the car I am car so it's like aham car aham means me car means you know the gari <laughs> the vehicle so when we think that we are this body that's like aham car I am the car right I am this body which is illusion basically right so aham car is that element which convinces us that we are not spirit souls. We are this body and everything related to this body is mine and I will lose my head, my mind, my brain and everything and anything else if something related to this body goes wrong. right? So that is what is ahankar. So that is the element of illusion, right? False ego. Yes. So that is why whenever somebody has a mind which is not balanced because see the mind mind is the first level when it comes to the subtle realm okay and below that there is this gross body now within the gross body there are the senses right there are karma indriyas gyan indriyas you know the eyes the nose the ears the tongue the the skin you know the, these organs uh the gyan indriyas karma indriyas they they are like the servants of the mind, right? So suppose you say, oh, I am from India. I love to eat gulab jamuns, for example. So what happens? You, first of all, your eyes will see a gulab jamun, right? So then the eyes will give the input to the mind. Wow, that's a gulab jamun. You got to go and get it, right? Then your mind and your intelligence will start talking. Then your intelligence will tell you, Oh, yeah, you, you have not had a gulab jamun. You, you know, in days, you know, maybe you could try it, right? So the mind tries to convince the intelligence. Why is it good to eat this particular gulab jamun, right? Or anything it could be, good or bad, anything. And then depending on the strength of your intelligence, you will make a decision if you should go and eat that or you should abstain from it, right? So imagine yesterday you have eaten like, five gulab jamun. So maybe today morning when the eyes see a gulab jamun and the mind tries to allure the intelligence, the intelligence will say, hey, shut up. You just had five yesterday. No more today. Next week, next month, your quota for this week is over. Right? The intelligence says like this sometimes. So then what happens? Your mind says, oh, okay. Some other day, not now. All right. Your intelligence will give you n number of reasons. It's bad for your health or this will happen, that will happen, n number of reasons and then you finally make a decision. So the mind cannot overpower the intelligence, right? Uh, but now suppose your intelligence is very weak. What happens? You see some, uh, some, some intoxicant, like you know, people, they are heavily addicted to uh, smoking and drinking, for example. So they see uh, somebody is drinking and then what happens? Their mind tells them, hey, he's drinking, she's drinking. What about you? Why should he or she have all the fun? Right? You should also have fun. So then the mind tries to convince the intelligence. And now what has happened? The intelligence is very weak. It's like crumbling, right? The person is not aware of the scriptural truths. The person is not aware of what a person should be doing. The person is not in the right state of mind or right state of the head right 
then what happens the mind succumbs to the allurements of the uh, and the intelligence succumbs to the allurements of the mind and then what happens the mind uh, the mind says oh i want it 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 <clears throat> and the intelligence says okay 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 don't shout don't shout you'll get it you'll get it i i i'll give it to you go 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 so then what happens when the intelligence is weak the mind becomes the master <clears throat> and the intelligence becomes like the slave of the mind the intelligence does what the mind says right but actually it's not like that act ideally the intelligence should control the mind right so that is the difference between a normal person and a sthita pragya sthita pragya means one whose intelligence is fully controlling the mind he makes the mind do what he wants not that he does what the mind wants him to do right so especially when you are walking in the spiritual path it is highly 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 crucial that you understand that you have to control the mind with the use of the intelligence you cannot succumb to the whims and fantasies of the mind always that will lead to destruction right of yourself your family your relatives your spouse your children your parents and the entire society eventually right so therefore you got to understand that anybody who has a disturbed mind and a weak intelligence will succumb to all these uh, things like black magic and all because they will affect your subtle body right and then what happens is because your connection to the self is so weak your own faculties are in doldrums that is why what happens is you uh, you get affected imagine a person imagine think of a scenario a person is there who is wanting to make a decision but the person is confused and then what happens another person comes and tries to uh, speak something in a way that this person becomes convinced of one of the sides right so for example if a person is thinking should i uh, drink alcohol today night right but he's confused right he does not have a very strong intelligence and then what happens so one of his friend calls him hey are yaar party hai aaj come it's it's party time today come let's enjoy and then he is like oh no you know i have this meeting tomorrow morning i can't do it today i think i should not i have to drive 10 kilometers uh, no nice maybe i don't know what should i do should i do should i not do should i do not to do not to do not to and then this friend so called friend an enemy in the garb of a friend right uh tries to convince you hey what's what's wrong with you man everybody does this tu bhi karta hai main karta hu sab karte kya ho gaya kisi ko right what has happened nothing right so therefore kuch nahi hoga nothing will happen it's just today you have to drink you know ek do piyenge that's it one two that's it not more than that and then this uh, this person his mind is like oh yeah because his intelligence is anyways not functioning properly because of his um habits right so the more you indulge in sinful habits the more your intelligence succumbs to the mind right so the more you do something the more you get used to doing that and the more you feel it's okay to do it right so imagine a person who murders somebody murder right so you go and if you tell a normal person hey can you take this gun and murder somebody you know they will be like oh my god how can i do it you know even if you give me a billion dollars i would not do it a normal person could say right but if you tell a murderer uh, can you go and uh, shoot this person and they'll be yeah of course no problem you just give me the money i'll just go and take the gun and just that's it why 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 does it happen because this person he has done it so many times so many times so many times he feels it's okay to do it that's it anything you do more you start feeling it's okay so the more you do good things the more it's it's easier for you to do good things even further and the more you indulge in sinful activities the more difficult it is to say no and the more easier it is to say yes right it's a cake walk to say yes so therefore you got to understand that if you feel that there has been situations in your life where uh you have been a victim to all this right so you have to understand that these energies can only overpower you if you have a very fickle mind 
and a very weak intelligence, right? So if you have a very stable mind and a very strong intelligence, these things cannot overpower you. They just cannot, right? Of course, they may overpower you temporarily, but then very soon that will be uh, dispelled, okay? And of course, now somebody may say, oh, my mind is very controlled. You know, I have a very strong intelligence. I am very strong inside myself. You know, I am this superpower within me. But then, even then it could affect you if you are not connected to uh, the higher truths. If, even if you are very stable emotionally and very strong in, uh, at the level of the intelligence, even then, if you are not connected to the Atma, the spirit soul, right, at a spiritual level, then also this will affect you. Guaranteed, this will affect you. So somebody may say, oh, I am going to the gym. I am very disciplined. I am working eight hours a day. I have the best, you know, family life, whatever you may say. But even then, it will end up affecting you, right? Because you have no connection to the higher power, to the source energy, to God. Then this will definitely affect you. So... One, one category of people is who have a very uh, weak intelligence and a very fickle mind. They are definitely going to get affected irrespective of any circumstance. And the other categories who are very strong mentally, intellectually, but have no connection to the spirit, they are also vulnerable to be affected by this. But it will be a bit difficult, but it they may also get affected, right? So therefore, you need to do three things, right? And from astrology, if you want to discuss, then, well, it's pretty obvious. Um, the num, uh, if, if you have prominent planets related to the 8th house or the 12th house, or uh, if you have prominent planets uh, related to Rahu, Ketu, or Saturn sometimes, uh, then this can happen, right? Uh, if you have prominent planets in debility, then this can happen. If you have prominent planets in exaltation but afflicted even then this can happen right so if you are uh, into depression then this can happen if you are hyper anxious you are in anxiety then this can happen right so uh, yeah i mean uh, if if mars is involved uh, with moon and uh, also the dustana houses for example then also this can happen saturn moon saturn rahu saturn ketu these probabilities are much higher right Lagna Lord in a 8th or 12th in a Dustana, Sun, Moon in Dustana. So the more you have these combinations, the more it is difficult for you to control the mind, the intelligence, and the more easier it is for you to uh, lose your mind when anything happens, anything of this sort happens. So therefore, you got to understand that irrespective of the astrological placements or irrespective of the reality, you can actually improve yourself and you can uh, get rid of all this, right? Of course, you, you may not be uh, in a position where you say, oh, I, I will be 100% immune to this, right? But you can at least make sure that you are immune to the best possible capacity, right? So therefore, the first thing is you have to stabilize your mind. That is the first step, right? The second is you have to have a good intelligence, and the third is you have to do spiritual practices, right? Now the question is, how do you control the mind? The mind, as Krishna says in the Gita, the mind has to be controlled by two ways. One is by practice and detachment, right? So for example, um, many times people, they tell me that, oh, if I go to this place, you know, I get remembrances of my old habits and I want to indulge again. So then I tell them, then don't go there, right? Take some other route. Take the long route with your car or with your bus, but it will save you uh, a lot later on. Sometimes people tell me, oh, if I talk to this friend, he or she drags me to these bad habits. Don't talk with a friend, right? Don't talk doesn't mean you delete their number from your mobile phone, but try to restrict your association. Do not lend your ears to somebody who forces you to indulge in bad habits. Do not lend them your ears. Do not, just do not. I don't care who the person is. The person could be your mother, father, husband, wife, best friend, best anybody. <laughs> do not lend them your ears. Just do not lend them your ears. Do not give them your ears. If you give them your ears, then you are gone. You are finished. You are as good as dead or even as worse as dead, right? More worse than dead. 
So therefore, do not lend your ears to somebody who is alluring you to indulge in sinful habits. If you do this, then you are... Anyways. <laughs> and after that, you got to understand you have to strengthen your intelligence, right? How do you strengthen your intelligence? You have to read these scriptural texts like the Bhagavad Gita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Rama and the Mahabharata. They will empower you with divine wisdom so that you can understand what is good for you. You can take inspiration from great personalities from these epics like, like who? Like so many. <laughs> we have the example of Dhruva Maharaj. We have the example of uh, Priyabrat Maharaj. We have the example of Prithu Maharaj. We have the example of Arjuna. We have the example of Prahlad Maharaj. We have Yudhishthir Maharaj. We have Bhishma Pitama's example. We have the example of the great personality Vidur from the Mahabharata. We have Devi Kunti's example, right? So many great personalities. So many. It's like endless, right? And you can learn from the great sages. Maharishis, Brahma Rishis, Maharishi Vyasdev, so many divine realizations you will get. Then what happens? You exactly know when to say what, to whom and how much. <laughs> because Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Matta Smritir Jnanam Apohanam Cha. I am the giver of knowledge, forgetfulness and remembrance. I am the giver. Yes, Krishna says it. I am the giver. So if it happens with you that you want to do something and um, or you know you should not do something but you forget, right? So it means Krishna has uh, activated the forgetfulness element within you. So that is why you forget and you go and indulge in it once again, right? Because you are not connected, right? Now you may say, oh, so... If I do sinful activities, is Krishna to be blamed? Is God to be blamed, right? God is the culprit here. He is the main culprit behind all the wrong things of this world, right? No, actually, he's not the culprit. What happens is when you perpetually want to keep doing sinful activities, then what God does is he switches off your intelligence because, because then you can't enjoy, right? If, if you want to do some nonsense and every time your intelligence hammers you, hey, this is wrong, you shouldn't do, don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do. Then what happens? You will be miserable when you are doing that, right? So God says, okay, you want to indulge in it. You didn't listen to me. I am that voice within you. I, I'm there in your heart. I'm warning you again and again, please don't do it, but you are still indulging it. So, all right, I will switch off uh, the faculty of intelligence. And then finally, what happens is uh, you forget and then you continue to do what you should not, right? So therefore, the more you start doing um, the things which you should do, the more your forgetfulness uh, reduces and remembrance start, starts to come. So therefore, you got to understand that if you want to stop doing uh, sinful activities, you have to take baby steps and you have to start saying no gradually, right? You have to increase your willpower by staying with those who already have willpower, right? So therefore, it's essential that you visit a spiritual community in the weekend so that you will meet people who have very strong willpower. Otherwise, if you are only indulging in cricket, uh, Bollywood, Movie songs, movie stars, cricket stars, uh, Bollywood actors and actresses, uh, jokers, comedians. If that is all you do all the time, playing games, uh, watching random videos in YouTube, then it's tough, <laughs> right? So therefore, read the scriptures, be enlightened, be awakened. And in the morning, please do spiritual practices, you know, chant mantras and do meditation try to do some pranayam, try to uh, connect to God. And then if you do all this, then you are connected at the level of spirit. So then what happens is you will not be affected. As I said, uh, you might still be affected, but it you will bounce back within a very short time, right? And of course, at an external level, you can always uh, read the Vishnu Sastram. You can do uh, Narayan Kavaj. Narayan Kavaj is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
uh, you can read um, about uh, the Vishnu Sahasranam, as I said, is very powerful. It will remove all inauspiciousness from your life, right? Then you can do Ram Raksha Stotra. You can also chant the Hanuman Chalisa. So all these things, if you do, they will help to remove inauspiciousness from your life, right? Along with the things that we discussed, of course, not that uh, you have certain habits in the night and in the morning you go and do Hanuman Chalisa. Have you seen people the in the night they are doing something else and in the morning they have certainly contradictory activities, right? So people, this, this category of people, they think that Okay, we will do whatever we wish in the night and, you know, in the morning time. Okay, we will do a little bit of a bhajan. You know, we will also do some, uh, some superficial, fake spiritual practices, you know, some activities we will do. And then we will compensate, right? So, there are many Hindus who do this, right? And there are many Christians, right, who they will do sinful activities and then they will go to the church and then they will go and confess to the father, right? So, every uh, weekend they will come and do the same confession, right? Like in India also, if you go, you know, uh, to the temples, you know, you will see people will do like this, you know, they will do like this, like this, you know, they will do like this, like they are they are uh, uh, apologizing to God for their uh, sinful activities, right? But the problem is every time they are coming, they are apologizing for the same same things, right? So do you think God is so foolish that He will forgive you every time, right? <laughs> He's certainly not as foolish as we are, right? So, therefore, uh, if you are sincere, then God is definitely going to help you, right? Otherwise, it doesn't matter. You are a Hindu, you are a Muslim or a Christian or whoever. Uh, how much ever religious you are, how much ever you pretend to be this great spiritual per person or you have a very good image, it's not going to work. Eventually, the truth will come out, right? That will be all from my side, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your patience and if you're new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down below in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will find, He will help you to get rid of all evil energies. All right. Thank you very much.